Hello Mallards, it is Thursday and because it's Thursday it is time to talk about She-Hulk. Not the most recent episode of She-Hulk because I didn't watch last week so we're only on episode two but I'm going to get caught up. I might watch another one tomorrow. We'll see and post a video but for now we'll talk about episode two. Uh, my first note is seriously do all courtrooms have a sketch artist because I thought about this when we saw it in the wide shot of the courtroom in episode one but really like I've never seen a, I, I don't spend a lot of time in courtrooms I guess but I wasn't aware that they had sketch artists and also how is that singular sketch artist so prolific because that fight scene lasted like maybe two minutes of footage and yet somehow she had at least two if not three different sketches of that fight uh, which is really impressive and obviously she could have like sketched them after the fact I guess but there were only sketches and no photos which means she probably didn't take a photo and then sketch from a photo she, she sketched from memory which would be cool but I like to believe that the person who was the sketch artist in the courtroom actually has super speed nobody knows it uh, and that's how they were able to make so much art out of such a short scene uh, my next note says the exasperated side of the camera was perfect most of the fourth wall breaks have been absolutely stellar like with the sole exception of the one I talked about in episode one that I thought was still good but like lost its impact when she'd already broken the fourth wall uh, every moment since then has been really good like the fourth wall break has been established and I think that the moments that they break the fourth wall are really really well done uh, my next note is oh yeah so then Jen gets celebrated right she goes to a party where everybody's like she hulk she hulk and she's like oh my gosh why are they calling me she hulk this is literally the worst and then we're reminded of when Bruce said you don't get to pick the name uh we are also reminded how much we hate most of Jen's co-workers when there's a man who's like oh there's a woman over there excuse me I'm going to go hit on it and he does say it and in that brief moment you think wow Jen does have a lot of self-control because if I could turn into a Hulk I would have pummeled him uh but then she starts talking about being a superhero and they're like you're an Avenger now and Jen Walters proves that once again she is the person who can ask the important questions you know was Captain America a virgin do the Avengers provide health insurance maternity leave or you know actual pay these are vital questions before agreeing to join an organization. Sam wishes he had asked them uh, because things didn't go so well for him. And then Jen gets fired, which is frankly rude. Like I get why they did it. They think she's a liability. They think that juries are going to choose her side and that people are gonna be able to declare a mistrial because they're like, oh no, you're going against a superhero. Like people are gonna to wanna to choose her, whatever. Uh, they fired her and essentially she got blacklisted because people don't want to take on the responsibility of having a superhero on their legal team and that's dumb and now I understand why in the comics Jen runs her own business because law firms are full of dumb people I, I mean I knew that before I got here but it's nice to see it portrayed on television and then we got to meet Jen's family which was exciting because uh, we love a family and we so rarely get family and it's part of the reason that she is like yeah you know like there's all these questions about the Avengers that's why the only people who become Avengers are like rich playboys or for some reason adult orphans and she is neither of those things which is why she didn't want to be an Avenger but it was really nice to meet her family they're kind of wild but I enjoyed them I thought that they were cute and they just asked a bunch of ridiculous questions at dinner I love that they asked like a lot of in-depth superhero questions as if because she had powers she suddenly would be able to answer all of these questions about every superhero ever can you guys tell that Stella is got a lot of energy I'm telling you nobody wants to be quiet while I record today this is literally I think the ninth time I've tried to record this video it's fine we're moving on this is not about quality it's about communication and also recording elements in my life and these vlogs are for me so if most of it is the sound of a cat running around That'll be for me to remember in the future. Remember when Stella used to run around? Now you do. Uh, 
Oh. My other favorite part is when she's like, oh no, are you guys concerned? And her family's like, listen, we've already dealt with one Hulk and you didn't even destroy a city. So good. Wow. Loved that. Absolutely loved that. Uh, and then the enemy, not necessarily the enemy, but a law firm that clearly has questionable morals calls her and offers her a job. And then Jen takes it without getting any further information, which might be the only dumb decision she's made this whole show. Like for a person who asks all the important questions, she didn't ask any of the important questions. She didn't even ask them if they paid. I mean, I assume that they did, but it ends up that she's going to work as part of a superhero defense squad and that's great. And also they want her to work as She-Hulk, which she's also not necessarily comfortable with, but looks awesome. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then in her first day, she's like looking at stuff and inner monologuing slash talking to us through the fourth wall about how annoying it is that these people are all gonna think that she got the job just because she's She-Hulk and she really did work hard for this and she bets that they didn't actually even have to work hard but they're gonna judge her for what happens. And then the boss turns around and goes, how do you feel about that? And she realizes she hasn't listened to a single word he says. And she just goes, um, I'm agnostic. And he goes, hmm, interesting. No, I don't think I've heard this. Wow. And then she just turns to the camera and goes, I'll spend the rest of the year worrying about what I just said. And I thought, wow, that's very relatable, Jen. And I love that for you. Uh, and then we meet Pug, who is also a member of that same branch, the, I can't remember what it's called, but like superhero defense or superhero, yeah, like superhero defense something department. I don't know. But Pug's part of it. Uh, he knows what's up. He brings a gift basket and it also has a map of the best places to use the restroom. And I think that that's a vitally important part of any office welcome package. So I'm glad that he's there. I already like Pug. Uh, and then we find out what her first case is and it is defending Emil Blonsky. We hate Blonsky. But I literally was like, wow, look, literally the only time that watching the original Hulk film has actually mattered to the MCU. I mean, at least they brought something back. And it was this, right now. And then they visit where Blonsky is being held and it is the DODC who we are already just so in love with after Miss Marvel. You know, they're our favorite. So we already hate who's holding him. Uh, and then we get in and listen to Emil Blonsky talk for like a while. Uh, my next note says literally not the face of polyamory I wanted because he talks about his seven soulmates who he met through the prison pen pal system, who he can't wait to get out and be with. And I thought, wow, polyamory, but also it's, it's not the polyamorous love affair we wanted. And he maybe is only using them for money. Uh, he's got questionable morals. However, when he delivers what he thought, that he was hired by the US military, that he was told the Hulk was a threat and tried to hunt him down, that he was given a serum that was supposed to like make him formidable and it instead made him crazy. And the, like, because of that is why he destroyed things. I was like, ooh, actually I may be in for this premise. Like I like the angle that we're driving at because it sort of fits in with like Captain America and the Winter Soldier and like sort of drives a little bit of what was in Miss Marvel, like a tiny bit, although that was mostly versus the DODC, but like that sort of angle, which I also feel like we touched on a tiny bit in WandaVision with everything that was going down, um, with like Vision's body and the military as part of that. So I'm really, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they do with this. And I thought the premise was interesting and I was also suddenly like, oh, actually maybe you need to take this case. Uh, and I also really liked that she then called Bruce to be like, hey, I have been, given a job finally, like I've been blacklisted, but I finally have a job and it's great, but I have to defend 
Mia Blonsky and I wanted to talk to you about it and I know but like it's a really good opportunity and blah 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 and she's like talking and it doesn't seem like you really care anymore because you never talk about it but also like I know that this was a big deal and also like there was this whole military thing and like he was under orders and she's just laying it all out laying it all out laying it all out and Bruce is like clearly trying to interrupt a bunch and then he's eventually like it's all right he sent me a note and then he says that fight was so many years ago I'm a completely different person now literally that's his full line and all I could think was oh my god sometimes sometimes I love the writers of these shows so much because I see what you did there. It's almost like it was played by a totally different actor back when he fought Blonsky. However, Emil Blonsky played by the same guy. <laughs> so that's also really, really funny. Is that the Hulk is played by a different actor, but they did bring back the guy who played Emil Blonsky. Uh, but that was hilarious. And I really loved that. And then he hangs up the phone because the Hulk is in space. Which then brings me back to that whole Planet Hulk theory. Like what if when he was on Sakaar for Ragnarok, he made a bunch of Hulks because he bled everywhere and people got his blood and he's going to show back up and there's just going to be a lot of Hulks. But also, I don't think Hulkling though is a Hulk. He's, he's an alien. But we could get him. Uh, and I'd love that because I'd love some Hulkling and Wiccan action because I'm hoping that we're getting Wiccan back. Uh, that would be lovely. You know, and, and I just need some of those beautiful gay young Avengers. So we can hope. Uh, then we learn that it was Abomination who was in Shang-Chi. Uh, and apparently that happened during his prison sentence. So that was interesting. And we'll see how all of that shakes down. Uh, and then the like mid credit scene is her doing all of these household chores for her parents, which I also thought was really cute. Like lifting a car or like, uh, carrying a bunch of water bottles in like those big, like water dispenser water bottles. I just enjoy the tone and the humor of this show a lot. I think that the premise of her defending Blonsky is interesting and like that could be really, really fun. And I'm generally just having a very, very good time. Would highly recommend this show to anybody who wants to watch it. And I am curious to see where things go next. And I'm just happy to watch Jen Walters do what Jen Walters does. And I will see you tomorrow.